Hello! Today I'm going to be taking a look at these two little bags, which looks unexciting from here, but hopefully it's not. Just before we get into that though, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you don't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon which will tell you when I'm uploading content. So what's in these little bags and what's the story behind this? Well, my contact at Banggood asked me if I wanted to take a look at one of these Pixhawk copies. Uh, essentially to put in a quad or a plane and, and see how it goes. And I didn't fancy it really and there were two reasons uh, this was the case. One is when I tried using an APM, albeit that's the old version of this, the hassle of trying to get the OSD working and doing a lot of setup to try and get a quad flying was awful. To be fair, the APM system at that time had already ceased being able to take like the latest development in um, the Ardu Pilot software for multi rotors, so so I was really on hiding to nothing. I've I've since like taken it out with the idea of uh, like, doing something else with it. I'm not sure yet. The other reason was I don't know if you've been watching Panis 360 videos lately. I certainly have, and he's been doing a load of stuff about putting Ardu Pilot on an F4 flight controller instead of the the normal sort of Pixel platform, which is generally more expensive, bigger, and has the whole OSD hassle. So the advantage of that, of course, is you're talking your, your regular flight controller 30 by 30 size, you usually have an inbuilt OSD and it's really just a case of hooking up um, a GPS to it. Now he's been doing it as a sort of alternative to iNav in fixed wing. I wanted to know if I could do it on a quad because of course last time I tried it it just did not work. Um, this time hopefully it will work. I don't know if it's supported on quads, I'll find out. So. Here's, here's what I got from Banggood. In this particular little box, I've got uh, an Omnibus F4 Pro V3, like one of the original ones. Uh, it doesn't actually come with much. This is one of the rare in instances that I would call it like some pin headers to, to plug stuff into. So we get this manual with it, which there isn't much to, just tells you what pins do what. But yeah, fortunately I've got a bunch of pin headers. And the other thing I asked if they could uh, get me is a GPS receiver. And the one I've got is this one. It's a Beatian BN220. Firstly, because it was very cheap and very small. Um, secondly, I recently put, I think I've had more than one of these, but I recently just put one on this. This is the Fluxwing I, I made in not long ago and I had some INAF problems with, one of which was due to the GPS receiver I was reading. I've tested this. This is another of these Bentian 220s and this got like a whole bunch of sats in my garden which the previous one didn't. So I was quite happy that was gonna be the case. So in terms of what to use it with, I didn't wanna go down a traditional sort of five inch uh, quad route because I thought, well, it's, there's room and stuff, but I thought for like doing longer flights and maybe doing some mission planning, I'd want a bigger quad. So I went ahead and cleaned up my old DJI F450 frame, which looks like this. It's pretty big looking now, isn't it? And it's just like a tank. So this used to have um, a NASA, one of the original NASA units, and it's got these old uh, 2212 920 KV motors. Um, and it's got these 30 amp ESCs. This is way before like Beale Heli uh, and stuff like that. So I'm hoping on a larger frame, it, 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 it sort of, the larger the frame, generally speaking, the less reactive you need it to be. So hopefully that's the case. So all I've got is just a bunch of servo leads going in, hence why I want the pin headers. And I thought I could make this really quite light. We can put 10 inch props on it. We can put like a small camera and VTX, the flight controller in the middle. You notice we've got no mounting holes on these, so they're too old, so we'll have to make something for that. And then we'll see if we can basically get Ardu Pilot running, see if we can fly it normally, see how that feels. And then can we do some sort of mission planning and stuff and see how, it, how Ardu Pilot is now for a quad on a traditional F4 flight controller. So let's get on with it. Now I've just plugged this into Betaflight and it was just because I wanted to test whether the GPS is all okay because the cable that came with it plugs in perfectly which is great. So what I just did is I plugged it into UART1, I set that to GPS in the configuration, I popped down here and added GPS there and then I just got my GPS sort of inside here and you can see 
well, I was going to say it just had a couple of satellites, so it wasn't getting an exact fix, but now it has. So I'm now going to have to blur all this out. But basically, I could just see that it was getting satellite signals and it was getting some strength. It, I've got it inside the house kind of pointing out the window. And that just tells me that it's all working fine. So we can go ahead and get to the firmware update. As far as firmware updates go, I'm going to use this Arducopter with BL, uh, BL which is the, the firmware with the bootloader and that is in the Copter Stable Omnibus F4 Pro. You'll find it from this page which tells you all about it and is really worth a good read through. But let's grab hold of that one. Okay, we've got that. So if we now go to the firmware updater, I suppose we're doing full chip arrays. We're loading the firmware locally. Okay, so I'm selecting my audio copter with BL. Open that. I don't think it, it matters up here. I mean, I want to do a full chip arrays. I don't know if I need a manual bore rate. Let's find out, see what happens. And let's try that again. Yeah, it's come up as being in DFU. That's better. Let's try flashing the firmware again. Doing an arrays. And we're doing the flash. All good so far. Seems to take quite a little bit longer than doing a normal beta flight flash. All right, programming successful. And now we should find that we can't connect here. Because it's like, I, I don't know what you are. Go away. So this is the point where we have to get our mission planner or whatever it's called for Ardu Pilot. See how well I've planned this out, can't you? And uh, try it on there. So let me, A, find out what I should be using and uh, then B, see if we can connect. So as it turns out, there's there's two possible routes to go here. One is mission planner, uh, but mission planner is a Windows only and I'm running on my Mac. So for you guys, this might be the right thing. I don't know enough about the difference between them, but the cross-platform one is called APM Planner, which I've just installed. And I've plugged in and I've connected to it. If I wriggle my uh, flight controller around, look, stuff moves. And it, and it complains about me not having configured a bunch of stuff. Now, at this point, I must admit I'm completely lost. So rather than just bumble through it, I'm going to find out what I do next, how I do it, and then I'll come back and tell you what I did. All right, so after quite a bit of messing around trying to figure out what was wrong, I've come to the conclusion that APM Planner on version 2, at least on my Mac, does not seem to work. I found this out when I was going through the initial setup and looking at my frame type, basically it wouldn't let me select anything except this Y6B. And then I've tried uh, installing the, the firmware, which you have to disconnect to do so, and it refuses to recognize that it's a, a valid uh, Ardu Pilot thing. So what I'm going to have to do now is go over to Windows. So what I did is I just um, put Mission Planner on an old Windows laptop and uh, this thing is recognized immediately with uh, without a problem. So I'm guessing APM Planner, at least on the Mac, is just behind using F4 flight controllers. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can raise this as some sort of issue or something, but meantime, over to the Windows box. Well, before we crack on further with the configuration of Ardu Pilot, I figured I'd need to do some bits and pieces on this and get things ready to install so I could actually do it. So I've gone ahead and done a bit of soldering on the board. I've put the pin headers in here where the receiver and the ESCs will go. This is for the video. I have also, following the instructions, there is a little jumper here to set the receiver type for PPM. Even though I'm using an S-Bus receiver, it said set it to PPM. Um, and it will recognize what sort of signal is coming in. The other thing I soldered on here, you can see I've got some power coming in here. This is just a JST lead, A, so I can remove it, and B, it's not having massive loads of amps coming in, so it doesn't need to be anything serious. And over here, we have on this particular board a little jumper where I've set the video voltage here to whatever the input is. I could set it to five volts or whatever input voltage is. I've set it to the input voltage because uh, the VTX needs seven volts at least and I figured uh, we'll see how it is. I don't know if it's going to have clean enough power but we'll find out. 
Now there was another curious little quirk. When I tested out the little GPS on Betaflight, I was thrilled to find that I could just plug it in there and it would work. But Pilot says, hey, you can't choose where you're going to plug them in. I want them in a certain place. That was UART 1 and it wants it into, I think this is UART 3. Now obviously it's got a couple of pins left at the end here, but there was also a bit of a change around. So uh, on this one, the, the pins would go ground and then 5 volts. Over here, ground and 5 volts had to be switched around, so watch out for that one. Uh, anyway, the other things I've got plugging into it are, I've got a little X4R receiver. It is running S plus, but it's going to go in there. I found this little um, Runcam MicroSwift, which was just attached like that. And then I found this old AKK uh, receiver. It's only got an RPSNA adapter. Um, I was going to use this one because it had smart audio, but then didn't for two reasons. One, I don't think Arduino Pilot can handle smart audio. Can't find anything about that, so I'm guessing not. Two, I had a bit more of an issue thinking about how am I going to sort out where this antenna adapter is going to go. So VTX will just plug in like that and we are just about ready to go. Now, as I've mentioned before, if you look at the F450, it doesn't have your normal mounting holes and we don't just want to sort of, you know, stick it there. So what I did, I did a little print of this thing here and the idea is all it does is provide a flat base and it's just sort of got some recess holes to put a couple of risers in which I've done and then I can stick that down with a bit of foam tape so it creates a little bit of um, anti-vibration as well and then that just sticks on top like that so I can easily take it out if I need to and I can unplug everything with it if I need to but I'll still be able to um, get to the USB because it will go on like that and I can get in that way. So I'm going to put that all together and then go through the uh, configuration of Ardu Pilot. I've noticed a couple of little weird quirks already. I mean, I mentioned the whole fact that it's like you have to have the GPS here, not here, because I want it on this UART. Why you can't just select it is another thing. The other thing I notice is when you're doing flight modes, flight modes all seem to be set on channel 5 only, as opposed to having to be able to use, you know, whatever channels and switches you want to do stuff. So some some little weird quirks and stuff, but you know we'll we'll go through it and we'll see how it goes, and then we'll actually see if we can fly this thing. Okay, so we're connecting in to Ardu Pilot now. Well, we're connecting into the flight controller with Ardu Pilot on a Windows PC because it didn't want to run nicely graphically on my Mac in uh, emulation, and we're connected here, and you can see we've started getting lots of warnings like. RC you're not configured and we got no fix and we something called EKF and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I've already done a few little bits. If you go to the initial setup, there's some bits you need to do. First is selecting your frame type and we've just selected a, a regular X-copter. Next is decalibration and this is where if you go to calibrate Excel, uh, basically it asks you to turn your flight controller over in lots of different ways. It's better done before you actually attach it to the quad uh, and then you can do the normal calibrate level. That's something when you put it in the quad just in case you're slightly off centre that's a good one thing to do then. Compass, don't have one, I've just got a GPS so I've disabled it. Uh, radio calibration, this is next. So you can see my various signals here and calibrating radio is fairly easy it's just a case of doing what it tells you to do and basically move all your attach sticks and switches around a bit like that RTL activated stabilize mode GPS. and you can hear RTL I've already set some activated. modes up there stabilize mode and click when done so the weird thing about Ardu Pilot is it insists on doing everything on channel 5 um, which doesn't give you a lot of scope and uh, you have to sort of set up your stuff a little bit different so I've decided in here I'm going for stabilize then I'm going to go for position hold which is like a GPS mode and then RTL if I get stuck and then over the other side uh, auto which is your mission stuff and then circle mode for the hell of it and I figured I'd also throw in auto tune there. And I can go through those. Oh, I should save the modes first. 
I should be able to get through those with my controller. Circle, auto tune, and back through we go. GPS, stabilize mode. Okay, so I just want to explain how I did the modes there. And you see, I've got my mixer here for channel five, and there are six positions which I've labeled modes. The first one's pretty obvious. It's it's a single switch on SG, so up is stabilized, then GPS. that is position hold, RTL and that's return to launch. What I've done there, I've got each one as a weight. This is really a simple case of going in and being on that switch position and then as you move the weight up and down you can see the PWM value move on the screen and it tells you the range it wants for the PWM to be into so I just sort of hit the middle of that uh, and that was quite easy to do for the first three modes. Now the way I've got it working for the next three modes is um, I've got this switch here which means use a different mode so if, if I do that it then goes on to this switch here so those are the other three modes and during that time Stabilize. those modes don't work so you'll see these are called L1, 2 and 3 this means it's a logical switch uh, so just in case you haven't used them before what a logical switch looks like is this and each one we're doing an AND and this means it wants both SF down and SE up along and down so that is logical switch one two and three and as soon as you set that condition you can then use this as as if it was a normal switch which is exactly what we got here the only other thing I've done in the mix differently is for each of the logical switches I've given them priority so that means aside from you know the weight's normal but what I did in the mix multiplex I said replace which means it overrules the other one so that means whatever position I'm in here as soon as I turn that toggle down it goes directly to that mode but if I mess around with those ones nothing happens until that switches back again noisy isn't it anyway that's how I just did a six position on one channel using two switches so there was also a bit of changing to do or changes to, to, to do um, if you read the web page about how to set this up, it mentions the battery monitor. And if you plug in a battery currently, um, nothing will actually happen. It will just not say anything. But if you go and look here, uh, bat mon, as you see there, it's set to disabled. And the instructions here say set it to four, like that. So whenever you change something, do the right parameters. And then we have to do a reboot. So if I disconnect that, unplug it, and then connect up again. So now we're reconnected. If we search this time for bat underscore, we will also see some additional things. So we've got battery monitor now, and what we need to do is set the battery voltage pin, which is there to 12, which is already done. And there are some things about the the amp pins, but I haven't got the amp meter connected, so I don't care about that. The other big thing which is different on the F4 board over Pixhawks and things is having an onboard OSD. Bit confused at this at start, but again, I found another web page which helps you here. Um, essentially, you, you have to set this to one uh, and then write that, and then once again reboot. So disconnect. And then if we go back to OSD, we should see we have a screen to work. And this is actually quite difficult to use, I have to admit. So um, it's got these sort of units and stuff uh, and the warning uh, RSSI values and stuff. And you can actually change between different screens. You can use a uh, specific channel for that. Uh, and then you go on the screen and you can actually sort of lay the stuff around. It, it's a bit weird though, you can see I haven't got much of the screen here and I can say reduce view um, but you still can't see much and essentially you have to stretch windows out I found to get this um, but yeah you, you've got bits you can sort of turn on and off here um, and then you can sort of move it around to your heart's content there's there's not, compared to Betaflight there's not that much there and you've also got different fonts you can use and stuff like that 
and you you can go onto like screen two if you uh, make that available and stuff. I won't show you what I did here because it takes too long and it's it's awkward to stretch the screen around and stuff. One other thing that I needed to do, I'm using uh, an X4R, so I'm pushing the RSSI down a channel. And if you had something like an XM Plus, you'd have the same sort of thing. If you went and looked at the RSSI, uh, you have a type there. At the moment, it's disabled. So for me, it's a RC channel PWM value. So let's do the normal um, disconnect. The reboot and let's search for our SSI again. And this time we've got, because we've enabled it, we've got a bunch more things here. So the specific one we want is the channel, and I've got mine on channel seven. Right, there's params again. Uh, and you can see that made us a lot happier uh, as far as actually getting to run this thing goes. Okay, so we've now plugged in, we've got battery voltage. So then I hit this thing where I tried to arm it and it says pre-arm logging failed. Uh, this is apparently a thing that it expects to have an SD card in there. You can actually turn this off, but I thought it might be interesting to actually use the logging aspect just to see what happens. So now we've got uh, an SD card in there. If we try and arm, it arms. And we can spin the motors. Hooray! Okay, well I think we're in a position where we can try flying it now. I can arm the motors and spin them up. So I was just going to show that I've got the, the flight controller in there with obviously the power coming through, the XT60. That's probably going to go on top. I've just put the uh, x 4 at the side there and I'm going to route these up once I get the top on. The um, VTX is in quite loosely at the back just in, so I can get to the bottom press the button there at the moment it's on 25 milliwatts I might up that and it's this is a bit haphazard the uh, run cam there was nowhere to mount so I've I've gone with a bit of hot glue on there but I don't really trust that so I've put a couple of little cable ties around there just in case but uh, yeah I'm gonna put the top on now and let's see if it will uh, hover in the garden now normally I'd fly this on well I used to fly my F450 on a great big uh, 5000 free s Thought about doing 4S, uh, technically you're not supposed to do 4S with the 10 inch props I have, although one could argue that the props don't draw that much power. But I'm, I might try this with a quite light 3S battery just to see if we can get anything from it being a bit lighter than having you know legs and a GoPro and a gimbal and all that crap that used to be on it before. Um, yeah, so let's give it a try. Okay, so we're gonna have a, uh, a hover attempt just in the garden. It's pretty windy. Um, but I just wanted to see if it was particularly bad or or what really. So I thought, you know, let's just get up in the air and see if it flies. Okay, I've got the uh, pitch control reversed. Well, it's a bit on the wobbly side, isn't it? So we need to find out how to sort that out. Apart from that, it seems to fly. So let's just know what happens if I switch to GPS mode. So I'm now in GPS. I'm just going to be holding position. Height. It should be position hold. So while that was going on, I was recording my fat sharks in my house, and I was quite impressed with the fact that it had some little messages that scroll across. I thought that was a neat touch. Obviously, I've just blurred out my GPS coordinates here, so that's why it looks a bit weird. So we've got this message called EKF variance. That's the first sign of something bad. The other thing I want to say is, even though it was looking wobbly, actually, from an FPV point of view, it wouldn't actually be that bad. But look what I get. When I try to go into position hold, I get flight mo flight change failed. So, basically, I couldn't change the modes for whatever reason. So, I went back and uh, started investigating what the problem could be. 
So I tried arming the quad in various modes while I had it connected to Mission Planner and it kept saying this EKF variance thing. And when I looked at the log from the flight, it had this EKF check, EKF failsafe, compass failure, mode not armable. I had um, it, it basically coming up and saying it was going into landing mode as soon as I tried changing into position hold. So I thought, is this like a pre-arm value thing? Maybe I should turn everything off so it will arm no matter what and try that again so that's what i did next so by disabling all the pre-arm checks i was able to get it into position hold but then position hold just didn't work and in the error log it was giving me all the same like this is going wrong it's bad and it still wouldn't let me change modes in the middle of it so as soon as it was flying um, and I changed mode back to stabilize and then tried to go into position hold it was like no you don't meet the conditions for this so I, I, I could kind of fool it by disabling all the pre-arm checks but as soon as it was flying and I tried to change modes it was like no absolutely not EKF is, is basically about this variance so it when it detects there's a difference between the compass position and GPS position and it thinks the velocity is wrong it goes into this EKF failsafe and basically says I'm disabling all your modes which depend on the GPS and you won't be basically from its default position it would then land the copter straight where you are not none of this return to home it would just go down because it thinks it's had a serious failure and it essentially comes down to a big mistake I've made you need a compass it's as simple as that if you want to fly anything but pure stabilized modes with a quad you need a compass and I have not got a compass, so I've failed badly. So if you're one of the guys shouting at the screen right now saying, what are you thinking? Of course you needed a compass. Here was my thought process. I thought to myself, if I was developing this ground up, could I work out where I was using a regular GPS? And I thought, yeah, easy, because you know which way you're facing, because you've got control over the quad, you know the accelerometer, and if it's pointing forward and the the quad is moving then you can work out position based on previous last positions and a lot of GPS's actually get directional data down because they work it out themselves for you so I kind of figured that would be fine it wouldn't be as accurate as a compass but it would do all right but one of the things I didn't realize is like I'm thinking like ground up what's my minimum of course our do pilot's been around for years and they had kind of a set hardware platform in the APM which they'd always say you'd have a compass in this of, of course you would why wouldn't you so they'd never ever thought about sort of railing it back and, and having something less than that you can get away with just a GPS in a, a plane because they say okay you're always flying forward but of course that wouldn't be as accurate if the wind's blowing you sideways or backwards or whatever so it's still recommended but that that was my thought process the the other thing when using a quad like this I didn't like these sort of compasses on stalks when I had the NASA on it it's big compass on stalk when I had the last uh, APM big compass on stalk so I just had my GPS there and it got absolute brilliant coverage the, the right thing I should have gone for and if you're looking at doing this with something similar is the Beatian 880 which is a GPS and a compass built in and we'll just wire straight in there and it's not it's not expensive um, it wasn't really about the very cheapest thing ever I just didn't want the the big stalk thing I didn't think I needed it that was the problem but yeah that that is absolutely the one to go for if you want to try this now you will remember that this was kind of the the idea of this was a, a bit of a product review sort of showing how I could use these things that Banggood kindly sent and we had the Omnibus F4 and the little 220 GPS so I've kind of failed to demonstrate these very well <laughs> so I mean, the, the Omnibus F4 board is a, a well-known consideration and works really well. Uh, and, and ditto with the, the GPS. It gets loads of satellites, it gets an accurate position. The two of them just don't mesh as far as our deep pilot goes. So what am I doing with them next? Well, the Omnibus F4 is still in here. I'd actually flashed it back to beta flight and I thought I'll do something else with it. And then I thought, no, I'm actually not. So I moved it back again to our deep pilot and it's back in here ready to get an 880 because I still want to I've, I've learned quite a bit about RD Pilot um, and I still want to go through and, and finish it off I do still think it's a bit quirky and odd and very very different to RD Pilot but I do like the idea of the whole mission planning and having it fly autonomously 
and being able to potentially hook it up to a ground station and see stuff live as it happened. I think that's quite cool. I mean, it's no good for mini quads or just messing around flying. I think it's a, it's a specific sort of function that you want, but I'm keen to mess around with it really and try it. So that's still there. What about the GPS? Well, if you remember at the start, I, I first hooked it into Betaflight to see if it would work and it was really easy to configure on Betaflight and maybe that's just me being used to Betaflight. So what I've done, is I've stuck it on this little quad, you see it just at the front here. Um, and the main reason for this one, it's pretty old this one. These are old Cobra 2204 motors and these two bladed props are the only ones that will fit without hitting the frame. But the reason I'm using this is it's also got an Omnibus F4 Pro, so it's the same board and I just hooked it in and I've got the GPS there and that configured easily. So I thought it would be interesting to test what it's like flying a mini quad with a GPS. Not necessarily using any of the GPS functions, but just saying, how looking at the, the height and the GPS speed, seeing if the coordinates are accurate, and of course testing out rescue mode, just to see how that is. So that will be coming up very soon, but not on this video, because it's already too long. So I'll have links down below, of course, if you want to get yourself an Omnibus F4 board. Um, I'll, I'll link to the GPS, but I'll also link to the 880. If you're doing it right, get that one. Also for anybody else, that may have something like a 450 or some old quad which doesn't have the mounting patterns, I'll include a link to Thingiverse where I'll upload that uh, little mount thing I had for my flight controller which you could just stick on a flat base. Anyway, I'm sorry this has been a bit of a fail video but I thought it was worth doing anyway just so people didn't fall into the same trap and at least I've learned a bit more about stuff. But um, hopefully I'll be back soon with Ardu Pilot and trying it, get it right and uh, certainly sooner messing about with that little GPS on a little quad. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.